Hi, I'm Todd Renabaum, and this is Bunny Hugs Mental Health Podcast on YouTube. It's also on all the audio places you can find podcasts. Um, this episode here, I'm speaking with Racine, and this episode originally aired September 2023 on the audio version, uh, and it's episode 114. And Racine, she, she, uh, who she, she was in a car accident. She was driving, and the result of that car accident was the loss of her daughter. Uh, she's since then also been divorced. Uh, it's it's complicated. It's emotional. It's uh, it's just a, a great conversation, and uh, especially for anyone that's dealing with loss. Uh, so yeah, without further ado, I give you Racine. As an advocate for mental health, or what would you say you're an advocate of? Uh, or just telling your story? I, and... More just trying to spread awareness and saying, you know, it's okay to fall apart. It's okay to grieve. It's okay to not be normal. Like what the definition of normal is, right? Yeah. Um, right. Yeah. Right. Yeah. More than that. It's just, yeah, if I can be truthful and someone hears it and it helps them then great yeah. yeah yeah maybe describe a little bit about what your life was like before it changed in an instant <laughs> uh my life was great um i probably complain too much but in the realistic thing um i had a loving husband and two kids and and a job i loved and yeah, things were going great. The girls were good. Like, don't get me wrong. We had our struggles just like any other family has. But for the most part, yeah, life was great. Had hmm. rider season tickets. So it was all good. <laughs> <laughs> so you had a normal, you know, a nice normal life. Yeah, things were yeah. clipping along. You were, yeah. Uh, and, how old were your girls at the time? Uh, they were 16 and 14. And we were close to family. We had family in Saskatoon, family in Regina. So, yeah, kids grew up with their cousins. So, yeah, no, life was good. Hmm. Um, and, and you, did you teach dance? Is that right? Yeah, I uh, had the Do Good School of Highland Dance in Saskatoon. So I had a bunch of dancers that were, we were a competitive performance group for Highland. So, yeah, hmm. yeah. And uh, Katie did, did, uh, Highland and ballet, and Lauren did Highland and Irish. Mm. My, my sister did Highland dancing, and oh, uh, cool. my brothers and I were in the Fraser Pipe Band in Regina at one time. Oh, and, fantastic. Yeah, yeah. We have family in Scotland and stuff, but um, so the, the, the day of the incident, you had a very tragic moment, uh, yep. and you were with your oldest daughter? Yeah, I was with Lauren, who was 16 Lauren. at the time, and my mom. We were uh, going to an Irish dance competition in Calgary, and it was also my mom's birthday weekend. Hmm. So it was sort of like a girls' trip with a competition in, in there as well. So, yeah, sort of yeah. two birds, one stone kind of thing. Yeah. Oh, cool. So that sounds like a pretty fun weekend. You're going to go on a road trip with your mom and your daughter and spend some time in Calgary. Yeah, yeah. yeah it was supposed to be fun. Yep. <laughs> It was a normal drive to Calgary. I'd done it a, a lot. We, um, most of the Irish dance competitions we came to were in Calgary or Edmonton. So we drove that route a lot. Uh, the only difference was this time I was trying to get to Okotoks, to the Canadian Tire, to buy <laughs> buy a present. So we took a slightly different route than normal. Um, but everything seemed completely fine. And then a freak hailstorm popped up. Um and we were in an accident. We spun out and were hit by an oncoming car. And uh, yeah, I I remember losing control of the car and then nothing. Um, and then waking up in a hospital. Even even when the hail started, I didn't I didn't even realize it was hail. I realized it was heavy heavy rain and it had slowed the car down. But had yeah, everyone that was that witnessed the accident said it was like this hailstorm that didn't even show up on the radar. Really? Yeah. So, mm. cause I went back and looked at it after and thought, you know, like what are all the, you know, you question everything when something tragic happens, like 
you, you know, you look back and go, well, well, how did, why didn't I know that this was coming? Why, but it was this thing that popped up and disappeared. Uh, yeah, it was there long enough that it interrupted, um, stars or ambulance. They had a hard time, uh, landing because mm. they came and, uh, took my mom. Okay. So we're very thankful for them, but yeah. Yeah. And, and you were seriously injured? I was seriously injured. Um, didn't, when, well, <laughs> the funny thing was, uh, was in the hospital and all the fentanyl crisis was all over the news. And so when I woke up in the hospital, I woke up to the word fentanyl. Hmm. And so I had no idea where I was, what was happening. All I heard was the word fentanyl and woke up screaming, screaming, no, 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 I can't have that. And having hmm. the doctors and nurses say, no, 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 you're in so much pain. You, you need this. We know how to use it. Um, so yeah, but I ended up with, uh, broken collarbone, broken pelvis, broken ribs up my one side and a uh, cut to my ankle. They originally thought I'd uh, broken my spine, but luckily that was not the case. So yeah. Mm. So it was, it was fairly traumatic. My mom shattered part of her arm and big cut on her head and I'm trying to think what else their injuries she had broken ribs i think yeah so we were both and it was interesting well i guess interesting it's interesting now looking back i broke everything on the right side of my body and my mom broke everything on her left hmm. and she was in the front passenger she was the front passenger and lauren had been asleep on the back seat and did not make it out of the car. Hmm. And she was asleep. I, as far as I remember, she was asleep. So that's how I choose to believe that she experienced the accident. I'm hoping that's the case. So yeah. Yeah. Hmm. From from all accounts, it was fast. So. Right. Um. Well, I'm so sorry for for that. That I mean, it is. It's mind-boggling to think your yep. world can just, like I said, just the, in a split second, your your normal is not even close to what your normal is anymore. Not at all. And with it being this weird hailstorm that, you know, I kind of, other than pulling off to the side of the road, which no one did, um, it's... I did everything you should. I slowed down. I, you know, did all that stuff. So it was one of the, one of the things I have to say that when I did go to counseling, she said, you know, who are you mad at over the accident? And I'm like, nobody. Hmm. And she said, well, that's not normal. And I'm like, what do you mean? She goes, you need to be mad at somebody. There has to be anger. Like you've got to get this out of you. And, I, and so I went through the list. I'm like, who should I be mad at? Should I be mad at the other woman? It wasn't her fault. She was trying to stop just as much as I was. So, yeah. Um, yeah. There was there mad was hundreds of people. Well, yeah. That's, that's who I ended up being mad at. God slash Mother Nature. I don't mm. know. Depends on what you believe in, I guess. Um, so I was mad at that, but it's kind of hard when it's an accident caused by weather. Cause it's, you don't really have someone to blame. Mm -hmm. Like it wasn't a drunk driver. It wasn't those kind of things where there's instantly a bad guy. Right. And so it was, yeah, I think that was, it was tough, but it was also, it's, it's also something you have to deal with. So why did your counselor think that you had to be mad at someone? Well, cause she, she actually had a, a huge list of people that I could be mad at <laughs> 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 down to like the car manufacturer. Like it was, it was uh, quite an extensive list. And I was like, I had ever, I'd like in my head, I'd gone through a lot of that already mm -hmm. and said, well, I could be mad at this, but what will that get me? And what, what will that accomplish? It's not like the car malfunction. Mm -hmm. So that takes them off the list and it can't you know there's all sorts of different scenarios but we lived with this scenario and i you know for a time i kind of went well what if i took a different route or what if uh, my mom had said 
because we we were in her car and she was in a small, we were in a smaller car. I had an SUV and she's like, Mm. well, if we'd had the SUV and I said, if I had the SUV, we might've been hit by a semi. Mm -hmm. Like you just, you can't know because there's so many variables that, you know, you blink your eyes wrong and something changes. Right. So Mm -hmm. who knows? So there's no point to dwelling on the things you can't change. You just have to live with consequences of what happened with it. Yeah. Yeah. That's, uh, yeah, that'd be hard. Like, I don't know. I don't know how I would feel in that situation. I mean, I would be, cause you're right. I mean, just accidents happen. You, yep. you could do all the right things in, in the right situation, in the wrong situation, do all the right things and stuff will just happen. Yeah. So, and then you um, can't, you can't control life. It just happens to you. You're just part of the whole thing. So mm-hmm. yeah, it's for me, it wasn't, it wasn't worth being angry. So, so yeah, I didn't dwell on anger. How, how long were you in the hospital before you realized Lauren was, was gone? I have no idea. Cause I was pretty much going in and out of consciousness. Mm. Um, so like, I remember them digging in my ankle to make sure all my tendons were intact. Um, I woke up and every time I woke up, I asked where Lauren was and they told me she was, you know, they'd find out for me and they weren't sure and this kind of thing. And I have no idea if that was true or what. Um, I remember my mom um, waking up at one point, my mom was beside me in a bed, um, which didn't make sense is why is mom here and not Lauren. Mm -hmm. Um, Did your mom know, I guess, before you? No, I don't think so. Oh, And... I don't know if I was told multiple times and just, you know, because I, I had a severe concussion, I believe. So maybe I didn't remember or whatever, Mm -hmm. but the point that I remember knowing Lauren wasn't with us anymore. She, um, a nurse handed me a phone said, it's your husband. Let him know your daughter is, is dead. Hmm. And I was like, Good bedside she's, manner. She's what? And the phone was at my ear. And so I didn't even have time to process it. And I was telling my ex that Lauren was gone. And I did I didn't even know there like there was an accident. Like Yeah. Right. Right. <laughs> so, you, you didn't even know what was going on with yourself, let alone anyone no, else. No, I had no idea what my injuries were, nothing. Um, so mm. it was a little little jarring. It's still if I was going to be angry, that would be the moment I would be angry about. <laughs> mm-hmm. But uh, you can't blame the nurse for the accident, but you can be angry at her for the situation. It was it was just not. I I shouldn't have been the one to tell my my ex. Yeah, it should have been a doctor or a hospital staff member or the RCMP or somebody should have been the person to tell him that she had gone. Yeah, yeah, for yeah. sure. Huh. Have you ever dis- have you ever done anything or complained or to the hospital about that or to the nurse? No, or- no, it wasn't. I probably should have, um, maybe, because it might help the next person. Uh, yeah, hmm. I hadn't really thought about it. Hmm. It was sort of this thing that sort of, until I started talking about it, because for a long time I would talk about Lauren, mm-hmm. but I didn't want to talk about the accident because I didn't want to remember details about being in the car so um so i avoided that whole thing so but it's probably probably not a bad idea to talk to the hospital and let them know that you uh, should not let someone have to have to inform that a loved one of that ever especially if they're in and out of consciousness mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. i suppose it's been six years though so she's who knows who that nurse was? Or... Uh, yeah, I have no idea who the yeah. person was that handed me the phone. Like that's what I like. I mean, I couldn't tell you anybody I talked to in the ER. ER. Hmm. Not a single person. I couldn't identify any of them. So, so after that moment, were you then more uh, kind of together with it? Like you remember stuff after that, or were you still kind of in and out of consciousness? I and... was in and out. I don't actually remember a lot until being in the room and having people start to show up. 
like family mm. members. Mm. And they would have all had to come from Saskatchewan to Calgary. Right. So it was probably a while later. Um, I don't know if it was that day or the next day. I'm not 100% sure. I do remember the night, <laughs> that the first night of, of uh, trying to sleep with a broken pelvis. <laughs> Mm. I thought I, I I had thought childbirth was, you know, bad. No, <laughs> the broken pelvis was probably way worse. <laughs> mm. So you were like, more fentanyl, please. Oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> if they if they would have. Yes. Uh, no. Um, yeah. Mm. No, there's a reason they wean you off stuff as fast as they can. Right. Yeah. It's not pleasant, though. <laughs> oh, God, I can imagine. Well, I mean, I'm. I'm six years sober and I went through treatment, but it wasn't for fentanyl. So, and it, yeah, just uh, withdrawals of any type are not fun. Well, that was my thing is because I was sent home with major pain meds and I was like, okay, nope, got to get off these as fast as I possibly can. Hmm. Well, smart idea. Well, yeah, par partly and partly not because partly part of me was pl uh, planning destructive behavior because... I was looking for my way out of the situation completely. So mm. I was collecting pills for that moment. Oh, so I see. So did your husband come to the hospital? I take it. Yeah. Oh yeah. Um, it, it was actually, uh, shocking how many people like, um, my whole family, his whole family, everybody came to Calgary. Um, friends that we'd known ages ago that had we'd sort of lost touch with showed up at the hospital because it was all over the news mm. um and luckily uh one of my good friends who my younger daughter's actually named after uh works at the hospital so she came to visit and so yeah um yeah no there was no lacking for uh support and flowers and yeah people people were amazing I can only imagine, like, I can't fathom being completely injured myself and having to l lost someone, like just being stuck in a hospital bed, grieving and also trying to heal and well, also just going through all the, the mental gymnastics of, I'm sure there was guilt and shame and y confusion and y trying to find someone to blame and, you know, like all that stuff yep. too. Well, well, and I don't think I was experiencing any of that hmm. because it was just a matter of functioning through pain and uh, trying to be pleasant for everybody else. Hmm. Like I talked to people on the phone and one of my best friends is like, yeah, no, you weren't, you weren't dealing at that point. You were still pleasant to talk to. You were still like trying to be there for everybody. So yeah, I don't, I think my grief was more at the beginning was private that I didn't, I knew how much pain everybody was in that. Mm. I didn't want them to have to worry about me. I'd rather worry about them. So I sort of pushed that aside for the time being and, Tried to reassure them that I was okay. This is, I just, I can't <laughs> even fathom. Like, it's just. It's, yeah, it's like, I know I'm smiling and, and laughing and that, but I've also had lots of time and, and counseling and support and all that kind of stuff. So I can like talk about Lauren and be perfectly fine. And there's moments that I'm not fine at all. <laughs> like. Of there course, are moments yeah. I'm a complete wreck to this day and probably always will be the weirdest things will set me off. So yeah, cause mm. I'm moving boxes of, um, we're, we're in a fairly new house and so we're building storage. And so we're shifting boxes and memorabilia and stuff. And so I'm opening a box and it's like, it'll be Lauren's stuff from her closet. And it's like, mm. Oh, okay. Let's close that. And Let's not think about it for a minute and just readjust and then start again. But mm -hmm. yeah, so there's, but it does, it like grief hits everybody differently. Um, but it's, I, I would say the one thing I would share with everyone is grief doesn't end. People sort of go, oh, okay, are you over it? <laughs> it's mm -hmm. like, uh, no, my daughter is still dead. 
So yeah, I'm never going to get over that. Sorry, but mm -hmm. it might make you feel better to get over it, but <laughs> I'm not going to. <laughs> I had a bit of a, a, a mentor that I worked for at one point and he, he told me grieving or how you grieve, I suppose, is also a choice. I'm not 100% sure what he meant by that mm -hmm. because we got interrupted, but I, 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 I take it as that you can just look at all the beautiful things and, and, and the gifts and the, be grateful for what that person was in your life, um, not let the grief absolutely consume you and just then, because there's some people that will lose a loved one. It's 20 years and it's like they just passed away yesterday still for them and it's I don't know. They, I don't know. He was very big on choice. He, he, he said that like lots of things are choices, including how you grieve. And oh, uh, yeah, I would say that's very true. Um, I also think people, people have no idea what grief truly is until it happens to them, and everybody feels it differently. And, and some people pretend like it didn't happen. Which is good either, right? It's like, it's going to bubble up at some yeah. point. Yeah, like I didn't want Lauren's room to change. That was my big thing is I wanted mm. her Lauren, uh, Lauren's room to be Lauren's room. Um, and my ex wanted it shut. Mm. And like he cleaned everything in her room and that, so her smell was gone, everything. So I had issues with that, but I was also laying in a bed and couldn't do anything and didn't realize what was happening. So, you know, oh, really, you were still healing physically and he was already cleaning. Yeah, up he the... he was cleaning her room up, like not like putting things away, but just like washing all her bedding and oh, washing all the clothes and putting cleaning the room and, you know, that kind of thing. It still was her room, like it right, still right. had all her stuff in it, um, but it was sort of a sanitized version of her room. Mm. Um, but yeah, no, my recovery was long, so um yeah, I didn't start. Well, I guess I was walking within five days of the accident um, with a cane um, and short short distances. But um, and I did go back to work within two months of the accident. I think dancing. Part of me wanted no. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I had a job in a church, and so I was mm. back doing that. So it, luckily, it was a really forgiving job that. I could do for short stints at a time and it wasn't strenuous physically. So it was good. Um, and everybody was super supportive. So it was a good atmosphere to be in, but it was also me trying to get back to normal for my family so that they would know things are okay and we can continue on and hmm. we so can, you're, can you're more concerned about this. everyone else. Uh, yeah, I'm very much the mom kind of person. Mm -hmm. Uh, so yeah, I'm, I'm very much that. So yeah, mm -hmm. I, I take care of others. So yeah. Mm -hmm. Did that come back to bite you in the butt? Oh yeah, very much so. <laughs> <laughs> okay, well, we'll get to that. Uh, but first I, I'm curious how the conversation went with, with your husband when the nurse handed you the phone, like what, what, uh, how would, I like, just like, if you didn't even know what was going on, how could you inform him yeah. properly? Well, and I couldn't, hmm. and there was no breaking it easy. Cause I basically just repeated exactly what she'd said to me to him. Hmm. And so that bit me in the butt too later on. Um, but I like, I was just trying to wrap my head around what she'd said to me. So it did not go well. Let's say that. Um, yeah. when she said it, I was like, what are you talking about? They're going to bring her here. Like, yeah. So yeah, it was a little startling yeah um you you keep seeing x did yes. he well, i guess did he <laughs> blame you he said no mm. um but i think yes and he might have had someone telling him so as well i don't know this i don't know the ins and outs of it um mm. but he chose to leave for another person. Hmm. So uh, he how got his. After? Uh, uh, he told he told me he was unhappy a year after. Turned out that the other person came about six months after Lauren hmm. passed. So yeah, yeah, 
So he got his, he dealt with his grief in a different way than I would ever do that. Mm -hmm. Because then he kind of abandoned myself for sure and was not there for our other daughter. Um, like he tried to be, um, but there's also hurt feelings, you know, um, one of the things I learned was compounded grief, which I'd never heard that term be before this, mm -hmm. but it was like, you're just dealing with the grief of losing Lauren. And then all of a sudden I'm losing, losing my ex. So it's like, you never have a chance to recover because it's one thing after the other. And it's just your whole world's gone. Well, you thought it was bad before. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and then now it's like, well, I don't know if I have enough money to support myself. I now have to sell a house that I didn't even want to change Lauren's room. And now I've got to sell the house. And so it was a, it was a massive blow. Did you feel any guilt or shame or, or did you, did you blame yourself at all? Like, yep. Yeah. Yep. Okay. Which is partly why I save pills. <laughs> so right. yeah, then it became a point of, well, if I'm not here, what's going to happen to my other daughter? Mm -hmm. Because if, because I knew my ex wasn't dealing with the grief, he was bottling it up. Um, and he was functioning. And for the most part, people probably wouldn't have noticed anything was wrong. But I knew something was wrong. Um, so, yeah, it became a, what happens to her? Why I'm here? Because I need to take care of her. And it wouldn't have helped anyone for me not to be here other than me. When I saw, when I sort of figured that out, that it was, yeah, it was an, it would have been an easy out for me, right? Like in my belief system, I, I don't know if suicide is a major sin for my belief system. Um, I'm not Catholic. So, <laughs> <laughs> so in my head, I would go to heaven and be with Lauren. Right. So for me, it was like, oh, I do this. So I get, I get Lauren back. It was very cut and dry. Like, yay. But then I don't have Katie anymore. So then what's, how do you pick over one kid or the other? Right. So, and then um, watching Lauren's friends and dancers, um, deal with the grief it was like yeah i'm not going to put that on all of them because they're they're dealing with enough as it is mm -hmm. so yeah so maybe it's a good thing i'm have the mom instincts that i take care of others because it saved my life so yeah yeah did you were you seeing anybody like a, a counselor or anything that that also helped with that or was or did oh. you start seeing them after that um after that actually um so with with the injuries I had, um, SGI um, was great to deal with. Actually, they um, that's our insurance company for those of you not. Saskatchewan. Oh, yes. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Funny because I'm in Alberta now. So, but oh. um, I actually live in Calgary now, so it's very odd. <laughs> hmm. But um, they are really they were really good, and they mandated um, physio and. Um, I got to a point of physio that I needed more than what the sort of basic um, physio was. And so with that, you have to go through like occupational health people. Um, you have to go see doctors, um, other physios to evaluate you that you're not, that's not your physio. So someone outside um, and then uh, a psychologist um is all part of that, mm. uh, that evaluation. Um, I found out, like, I didn't, when I left the hospital, I didn't know my ribs were broken. And mm. So when I went for that evaluation, they're like, oh, how's your side? I'm like, oh, fine, why? And they're like, well, your ribs healed okay? And I'm like, what are you talking about? She goes, well, your ribs down your one side were broken. I'm like, no, they weren't. She's like, uh, yeah, they were. I can show you the x-ray. They were all broken. And I'm like, Oh, I didn't know that. No one told you? <laughs> no, they might have. I just forgot that. <laughs> I don't know. 
somewhere else hurt more. That's very much the case. Like my ankle, my pelvis, my collarbone were way more pain than the, than the broken ribs. So that tells you something because a lot of people have experienced broken ribs and it's quite painful. Mm -hmm. So, um, yeah. (laughs) So, yeah, but with that came a counselor. And so, we went and it taught, we had the anger talk the very first session and we got through that and she's like, you're actually in pretty good shape for what you've been through. And I'm like, Oh, and she goes, you don't have to come back, but you can, if you want to. And I went, yeah, I think I need to come back. <laughs> <laughs> I think this little evaluation was good, but I don't think we actually got to what, really was involved so and it was good because i i did have her through my divorce and that so it was it saved me (laughs) Mm -hmm. so yeah i would say you know if you can afford counseling uh go it's totally worthwhile yeah it is and you might have to try out a few different counselors at first because sometimes it's not the perfect fit right away but um, I've had many, yep. I'm seeing one right now. <laughs> yeah. It's, it's surprising actually. People, I think people give up on it too quickly, you know, cause personalities clash, like it's okay. Like even like seeing a personal doctor, you may want a woman instead of a man, or you might want someone that's like got a better bedside manner or, you know, who knows? Counseling is the same way. You might have to try out a few people before you find the one that sort of is like, yeah, I can talk to this person freely and not, I don't need to hide anything. Because if you're hiding stuff and you're not telling the counselor the truth, you, the only person it's hurting is you. Like, it's not going to hurt them. It's mm-hmm. hurting you. So you might as well just put it all out on the table for the person once you find the right one. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and it's the stuff you don't want to talk about that you have to talk about the most. (laughs) That's very true. (laughs) It's all the stuff that you don't want people to know. But but it's all the stuff you need the help with. Did did you tell your therapist about hoarding the pills and having a plan and stuff? Yeah. Yeah. In the very first session? No. Oh, okay. Which is also why I knew that I needed to go back. Good, good, good on you. (laughs) <laughs> yeah, because, you know, when you when you when suicide comes up in your life, which I'm sure it does for a lot of people, you know, like you you don't want to talk about it. But unless you talk about it, you know, it's going to always be sitting there. It's going to be this weight on your shoulders. that's always going to be there. Either, you know, the thought the thought will keep coming back or it's the guilt of having even had that thought in the first place. So you might as well get it out there and deal with it. So, yeah. Mm-hmm. Have you experienced suicidal thoughts before? No. The accident? No. Have you since? Uh, once during the divorce times, but mm-hmm. yeah. But it was right. that same, like, oh my gosh, what am I going to do? And how am I going to survive? And yeah. Yeah. It's it, when your world's turned upside down. Yeah. Yeah. And, and the thing... A lot of people that maybe have never experienced suicidal thoughts don't realize it it is a bit of a spectrum from Mm -hmm. this is so hard, I just can't do it anymore to I really want to die and I want to kill myself or, you know, the other side is also, you know, I wish I just don't wake up tomorrow. I want to die, but I don't want to kill myself, right? You know, it's it's a bit of a spectrum and also just thoughts are just thoughts. It doesn't mean you have a big plan or... Or, you know, maybe it's not serious, you know, you're, but then you observe your thoughts and go, oh shit, I have this thought. That's yep. probably not, not great. I'm, no. I'm, yeah. Yeah. Any, I think anytime you think about harming yourself in any way, you need to talk to somebody other than your head because <laughs> you're, at times, you can be your own worst nightmare. So, you need, whether, you know, and if you don't want to go to a counselor, if you've got a good friend or somebody, I think having someone to open up to is probably, you know, just as good in some instances, especially especially with someone that, say, couldn't afford to go to a counselor because counseling is not, not cheap. Um, so, and there are 
places you can go where it, you know, it is less expensive. But Mm -hmm. if you just have a good friend that, that can be some relief, um, but don't necessarily expect answers. Um, Just have someone there to hear. One of the things that I had through this whole thing is I found out how good my support network was, which no one really knows until tragedy strikes. People you think are going to be there are not always there. And people will come out of the woodwork that you didn't even expect. So yeah, I had a friend that would come pick me up and take me to Starbucks, like, and like, say, get dressed, come with me, we're going out and take me to Starbucks. And then she would just, we'd sit in a park and she would say, okay, how's things going? And just ask questions and make me talk. Hmm. And that was, that was a godsend early on that she was there doing that. So, and I had tons of people that would text me and this kind of thing and just check in. Um, Did she make you pay for the coffee though? Maybe she was just using you for free coffee. Well, I don't know. I can't. Now that you're saying that, I can't remember if she did. I'm sure. I'm sure. I'm sure she probably paid. (laughs) (laughs) It's true. (laughs) It's true, though. Sometimes you you just need to vent, and you you don't need answers. You don't need advice. You just need someone to listen, and and that that alone can be priceless. Well, yeah, and especially if you're having thoughts that are a little dark and that are a little, at least that's on someone else's radar. Mm -hmm. So that it's not just you in your head thinking these things and not so that if something bad happens, it's a total surprise to everyone. At least this way that person could step in if need be. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. Or if they see you regressing or something, they can, yeah, yeah. they can be like, okay, we've got to get you help. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I'm not sure if you know this, but I'm, I've, I'm, I'm a, an attempt survivor. Oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah. This is mm, 11 years ago, I think now, but. Oh, wow. Okay. Um, yeah. I've had a bit of a journey myself for different reasons and things, but, uh, sometimes you do need, my one friend calls it a canary, like someone else coming up yep. and going, Hey, uh, you, you okay? <laughs> like you're giving yep. off signs. You don't even realize. Um, yeah. and, uh, but also it's just, I, I've just been so much more self-aware too. And it's like, oh, 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 okay. I've had this thought. It's not a serious thought. It was just a thought. It's not even a, a consideration. Okay. Yep. What, what am I forgetting to do or what, what, what's, what, what should I do about this? Like what, what are my next steps and yep. be proactive with it. So, um, yeah. Yeah. Cause a lot of times it's just like, okay, if I do this pain will stop mm-hmm. like very like. Point A, point B, done. Not right. Like it's an easy thought, but there's all the other stuff in the middle that everyone forgets, and it's just, yeah, it will end. So what do I have to worry about? It'll just, yeah, it ends for you, but then it transfers to so many more people than you. That's right. Yeah. 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 Um, and and back to your marriage or the lack thereof, mm-hmm. I guess. <laughs> uh, I guess it's not uncommon, is it, for um, relationships to end because of a, 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 a losing a child? Uh, actually, it's very odd for it to end. What? So that study, I can't remember. I, I need to find this fact because afterward I looked it up. And the original paper that said most marriages fail because of a chi- a death of a child, she made it up. No. Yeah. Oh it was God. not a peer-reviewed paper, and it's what everybody quotes. And I, I uh, there's um, an amazing group, um, Compassionate Friends, but it's for people that have lost a child. It can oh. be a child of any age. doesn't matter. Any circumstance. But they're an amazing group that I highly recommend. If anyone has lost a child, go to the group. Um, some of them, uh, we take uh, you take a picture and you share about your child. And you talk freely as much as you want or as little if you just want to say their name. And then pass 
and not say anything else, that's more than fine as well. So, yeah, I they they were great. But when I joined, um, I was one of the. Uh, I think I might have been the only one that was divorced. Hmm. Everybody else, um, they it feels like they stuck together because they supported one another and they were there for each other and they had the memories. And so like, I know that that's something I really, really desperately miss about my ex is being able to share stories about when Lauren was little, because we're the only two people that would remember those things. Um, And so that like, I think that alone keeps people together. So yeah, usually people hmm. stay together <laughs> with with the loss of a child. It's it's actually quite crazy that that stat is that notion is out there so prevalently that everyone assumes that. And then if, if you lose a child, they, and then people panic. It's like, oh my gosh, am I going to lose my spouse too? Well, no, no, you're probably not. I just had the unfortunate time that I did lose both. So hmm. yeah, um, are you? What's your relationship like with him now? Um, okay. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's, an, it's, no, it's absent. Like if I never have to hear from him again, I would be very happy. But I know at some point I'm going to have to with my daughter. So mm-hmm. I will be pleasant. I can be pleasant. So. So so your other daughter, how has she taken this? Because, I mean, that's massive for her too. She, she lost a sibling and her parents got yeah. up in the same year or yeah whatever yeah um i th- i think she was blindsided by both things that happened to her i don't think she saw either of them coming i didn't see the divorce coming mm. it was totally shocking to me um so i'm sure it was probably shocking to her um she's actually amazingly well um other than she really loves her privacy that's her only request so yeah, I would say yeah, she's great. Hmm. And how old is she now? Seventeen. <laughs> Shocking. She's no. no, she's twenty. Twenty. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Six years ago. Hmm. Yeah. Well, you did something. Time. Right. To, uh, yeah. Yeah. Totally. <laughs> I guess <laughs> or somebody did. I don't know. <laughs> so, so the combination of things, uh, yeah, went so far so good that way. So yeah, no, I'm. I'm super proud of her. Do you think your marriage was destined to fail, even if you're, even if Lauren were to live? Not as far as I knew. Hmm. I, I, I could be completely wrong. Mm -hmm. Like who knows what truly would have happened. Um, but like we were like before, before the accident, we were training for our, uh, we were going to do a anniversary hiking trip and it was going to be my first hike ever. My ex was an avid hiker. And so as my gift to him, we were going on this big hike. Um, and we just started training for it, uh, when the accident happened. So yeah, I'll call him. Yeah. <laughs> okay. <laughs> you do that. <laughs> I'll let you know. <laughs> I don't know if I want to know. Uh, you buy me a coffee, I'll let you know. <laughs> uh, do, do you know if the the other driver was injured at all or anybody, or is there other people in the I car think she, other than the I, driver? I think it was just her. Um, I think her, if there were the injuries, they were minor. Um, hmm. I wonder if she's going through. I have no idea. Uh, I, I hope not because uh, it wasn't her fault. Um yeah, she, like she's I reached out. No, and I've mm. never reached out to her. I because because she might remember the accident, and I don't want to remember the accident. So yeah, it's all I good. yeah, like um a year, a year after the accident, um, a good friend from Irish dance, um, her daughter was going to the competition that we were on our way to, um, and she asked if I would like to come. And so I, we came, uh, I came with her. Um, it was a very hard trip to drive that drive. We didn't take the same road, um, that we were on and we stopped in Bicycle and took the RCMP and the emergency responders girl guide cookies. Cause my girls and I 
grew up with guiding. So we took them a case of cookies as a thank you. And then uh, went to the competition and uh, the competition uh, awards a trophy in Lauren's memory. Mm. So I've handed that out a few times now. Um, it's really awesome of them. So, yeah. Hmm. But, yeah, so I've stopped stopped there and I didn't get to talk to the RCMP because they were out on a call, um, but dropped it off to the to the Depot. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> and so, so yeah, so I have, I went back that once. I just haven't been back since. So hmm. I'm so grateful to the emergency responders, like Stars Air Ambulance, like the Irish dance community in Saskatoon. Um, they hold a competition every year and they, they have a special um, dance and kids can enter. And I think it's like $10 or something to enter the dance. Uh, they can be any level and they all compete in one dance for all the judges. It, it's really nice. Cause the first time we did, we didn't really know what we were going to do. And the judges said, we're all going to judge. So there was like 10 judges that came and did it. Um, and all that money goes to stars or ambulance in Saskatoon. So um, mm. it's really nice to see. And uh, I was at the competition this year and we had just like 50 some dancers, I think that did it. So it's pretty impressive to watch and it's awesome. And especially considering there aren't that many dancers that danced with Lauren that are still around. So, right. so yeah, it's They're impressive all... that, that people would still be supportive of this. So mm -hmm. it's really mm -hmm. nice. I, I do have a segment. It's called that some bunny special. That's a segment where we chat about who cooperated in your mental health journey and helped fulfill your emotional tank brought to you by co-op. Uh, oh, so gotta when, love co-op. Yeah, right? <laughs> yeah. And, uh, the the icing, the cake icing, co-op cake icing is the best. <laughs> <laughs> do, do you have a co-op number? I do. I have one in Saskatchewan and my boyfriend here has one in Alberta. So, yeah. Uh, nice. So when you were in your darkest kind of moments there, who, who would you say, who filled your emotional tank, I guess? Hmm. Well, I think there's a... A few, for sure. My daughter, mm -hmm. she was a ray of light through everything. Um, whether she was just sitting on a couch eating sunflower seeds, or whether we were doing something together, so yeah, her for sure. Um, my mom and seeing my mom uh, recover. I remember uh, she, her being so bored after the accident because she couldn't knit. So mm -hmm. when she got to when she could start to knit again, that was. That was awesome. It was actually very beneficial too, because I've got more knitting from her. It's great. Um, <laughs> <laughs> um, my friend, uh, Carrie, who was my coffee companion, she, and she also did um, a food train for us after the accident. Um, so that, you know, that was great. Um, to have Our food mutual friend, Carrie? No, different, oh, different Carrie. Carrie. Oh, yes, okay. I have lots Sorry. of, it's, it turns out, no, I have lots of Carries in my life. Um, but that, uh, that Carrie, um, I don't know, Carrie, and I don't know if it was her and Rochelle and the other Carrie, or who was it, but on one of the anniversaries of us losing uh, Lauren, they had kids show up at my house and draw chalk drawings all over my driveway. I had a really long driveway. And they put messages and this, and all these dancers put it up. It was like... The most awesome thing, because I also got a text saying, oh, you should come outside and mm. walked outside to all these beautiful chalk drawings that all the neighbors could see. So, yeah, no, it was. So, yeah, the yeah. the Highland dance and the Irish dance communities um, have been Great. huge. Yes. <laughs> <Sorry>. <laughs> That's awesome. They've no. been great. Yeah. <laughs> no, they they um. were supportive from from my time in the hospital when my like my uh highland dance teacher uh came to visit we got notes from irish dance and highland dance groups from around the world hmm. um yeah no it and we had a gofundme page and people supported that and we like we have a scholarship in lauren's name because of that um nice yeah. So, and we have sponsored different trophies and the stages for Irish and like the support we got and the support 
and the love felt for Lauren were incredible. And like we had Irish dancers dance at the funeral. We had a mass fling at the very end with my ex's pipe band. Like it, it was a spectacular, like we had over 500 people come to the funeral. Like it, it was so amazing to be supported and loved by so many people and to see how much they all cared about her. And it was funny because there was often times that Lauren would say, I have no friends. And I'm like, no, I think you have friends. I think you're just, you know, in a low point right now. And yeah, there were so many people that came out and her friends. And I still get texts from friends of hers asking questions and how am I doing and this kind of thing. So Hmm, yeah, no, the support is so, was so great. The only thing I have to say that I, I, to this day, don't like is flowers. I hate cut oh. flowers because, well, you can, I know it's, I, I know it's so weird because I'm a girl and I, I know I should love flowers and, uh, but, <laughs> but when you get flowers at a funeral, mm-hmm. it means you just get to watch another thing die. Mm. And I know people, I, I'm, a, I'm weird in this reaction, but that's how I react to it. So it's like, so now it's so funny because people now give me plants. <laughs> And, and well, though I love too. it, well, <laughs> especially with me, because I do not have a green thumb, <laughs> but I appreciate the plants far more than cut flowers. Mm. But it was so funny because when Lego came out with flowers. Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, my boyfriend went out and got, bought me a bouquet of flowers. And he's like, these will never die. So I can buy you flowers finally. I'm like, oh, this is awesome. <laughs> <laughs> a turtle, a tortoise. Here's a tortoise. <laughs> <laughs> Yes, I, I need long-lasting pets, kind of thing, yes. <laughs> I feel like I cut off your, uh, you, you were talking about people that supported you, and no, I interrupted okay. your other Carrie, you were, you were mentioning. She was the one that was the, taking you the out one to the that, park and buying coffees uh, for you? Coffees, and to this day, like, when her daughter comes to Calgary for a competition, she always texts me and says, hey, do you want to come watch? Hmm. Um, we drove down to Lethbridge to see her dance, and... I got very lucky with my circle of friends. There were very few that disappeared and there was a couple I had to cut out, but not very many. So, you know, and it's okay. Like if, if a friend is not being a friend in the time you need, it's okay not to keep them in your circle at that time. So yeah, you need the people that will support you mentally and, and that kind of thing. Mm -hmm. It's okay to say no. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. Oh, I've had, I've had friends come and go and I haven't regretted any decisions. Let's put it that way. No, no. And the, the friends that I want uh, in my life are like anytime, anywhere. If you, if something's going wrong, let me know. I'll be there for you kind of thing. So yeah. It's quality, not quantity. In a weird way, it's inspiring that you can go through this. It's I mean, a short period of time, really a Mm -hmm. year of just hell. And come out yep. the other side because a lot of people wouldn't, or well, they would st- or they'd be stuck in that hell. They would be able to crawl their way out of it. Yeah, like um, it was it. I I find it funny in a weird way because when I went back to work, people are like, "What are you doing?" I'm like, "I'm trying to make life normal for my family. Like this is just, you know, like." We're okay, right? And I would do these things and people would look at me and react really weird to me and I couldn't understand why. And then unfortunately we lost another dancer. Um, And uh, I watched that grief and went, that's what everyone expected me to do. But Mm -hmm. that's not my grief journey. That's their grief journey. It's not mine. Um, You felt judged then by some people? I did. I felt very judged. And it was so funny because you have that where it's like, why aren't you grieving more from some people? Mm -hmm. And the next person would be like, well, haven't you gotten over it? Mm -hmm. And it's like, you can't win. You you can't, there's no way to win. And it's like, no, this is my journey, not yours. Just, just sit back and let me do it. Right. I now see why, you know, that people People need to fall apart and need, if they need to take the year off work and just deal with it, great. That's their journey. You can't do what they're doing. Mm -hmm. And like, 
the next person that went through my scenario may not mm-hmm. may not do as well. Like there's times where I look at my life and how it was to what it is now and I'm like, "Oh, I can't even believe it's only been 6 years." And it's right. like Lawrence passed away. Katie's moved out on her own and and is uh, successful on her own. I've moved to a different province, to two different cities. I went through school and graduated top two of my class. I've gotten a job, right? Like I've got a boyfriend, bought a house. You know, the difference in my life from six years ago is unrecognizable. And it was all due to that one split second? One split second that you don't know if you could have prevented. You you, You do think about it, but... Like I said, it could have been a semi that hit us if, it, you know, or even if I was on a different road, something else could have happened. If it, I mm-hmm. choose to believe that if it's your time to go, it's your time to go. Uh, I was thinking of the movie like Sliding Doors. I don't know if you, the, it's a Gwyneth Paltrow movie, I think, mm-hmm. where she, if she gets to the subway, if the door is shut before she gets in, this is how her life would be. But if she gets on, that would have be how her life would go. And I was, and it's just that one second of the door sliding shut that changes everything, right? So who knows? If Lauren had lived, who knows what would have happened, right? Like, mm-hmm. Do you think the universe is just chaos or do you think there is kind of some kind of uh, algorithm that we're following and you know what I mean? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Like is, it, is there a plan that God is like or whoever is moving the chess pieces around and you don't have any control over the scenario and it's all planned out and you just, Maybe. I have no idea, yeah. but hmm. it could be, but it's, it's the best way to think about it because I got to have 16 years and there's lots of families and parents out there that don't get that much time mm-hmm. that get split seconds with their children from like from birth right. and, and the kid's gone or they get, there's a toddler that passes and you go, okay, I had 16 years. Thank goodness. I had 16 years because I got to know my daughter. So there are blessings in this and there are blessings because, because she was around. Right. Right. So, So and how she touched people. And I have friends that said that after Lauren passed, they kept seeing a yellow butterfly and, Mm. And they said, well, that was Lauren coming to visit. And so her kids now associate these yellow butterflies with Lauren. And it's like, that's really awesome. Like that you think you've got this little guardian angel out there of this butterfly showing up. Like that's awesome for someone to think about. So strange because like, I didn't believe in the whole ghost thing, signs from the beyond, you know, none of that. Like I never put two and two together that pennies from heaven was a thing. Um, uh, we've now switched it to dimes for anyone that's uh, wondering because there aren't pennies out there. So it's dimes from him there, but it's weird. It's absolutely weird when a dime will show up in my life for a long time. Whenever, when I would go to the grave, like Valentine's day or those kind of days, I had these little felt hearts that I would put on her grave and they were just teeny tiny things. Like I'll be having a rough day here. The hearts were before I moved here hmm. and a heart will show up in this house. One of these little felt hearts. I have no idea where they come from, but they pop up in the most random places. So it's like, I have no idea if that's from her, but let's choose to believe that because it's kind of cool. You got to you gotta look at the for the wonderful moments in the sadness and those mm-hmm. glimmers of light because the people you lose, they are lights in your life. They're just, you know, everybody's here for a short amount of time really even if someone lives to 103 like it's still relatively a short time but you gotta Mm -hmm. appreciate those moments and when the person's gone you have to look back and remember those moments thank you so much for watching be sure to subscribe and to like this video bunny hugs and mental health is on instagram at bunny hugs podcast and you can listen on apple podcast and spotify this is todd renabom saying Make your beds and take your meds. Bye.